Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So this video is part 2 of my beginner tea canter series. In this series we're going through tea canter from scratch for absolute beginners. In each video we're covering a small part of the tea canter GUI library for Python. And in this part we're going to be talking about labels, buttons and entries. So labels are this text that you see right here. So it's essentially text that you place in your graphical user interface. Buttons are obviously buttons, so there are these things that you click, and when you click them, something happens. And finally, we have entries, which are these input fields in which you can write user input. So these are the three different widgets that we're going to discuss in this video. Now, without further ado, let's just get started. So some starter code that you can see right here. So here, we're simply importing tkinter. Next, in our main method, what we're doing is we define the tkinter root window, so this part right here. For more details about this, do check out video number one in this series where I talked about widgets and setting up tkinter totally from scratch, because here I'm just going to kind of gloss over them and get to the main content of this video. So we define the root widget. Next, we define a title for our um, window. Then we define the geometry, so the height and the width. And finally, we launch a main loop to ensure that it gets executed when we run it. So if I run it now, you can see we have this blank app. Nothing is inside it. Um, we just have the title and the geometry that we asked for. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a label. So I'm going to use these two lines of code to add a label to my window. And I'm going to walk you through these lines and tell you exactly what's going on. But essentially, here's what's happening. For this label, we said that the parent is window. Now, we already said this before in the series that widgets inside tkinter and just a side note, widgets are essentially everything you can see in tkinter. So labels, buttons, windows, frames, everything like that is all a widget. So they're all types of widgets. So for every widget, the widget must have a parent. Unless you're the root node, then you obviously don't have a parent. You're the parent of everything else. So here I'm essentially saying window is the parent for label. Now, if this isn't clear for you, I do suggest you go back to video number one, where we talk about this in more depth and we talk a bit more about the hierarchy in tkinter. Otherwise, so other than defining the parent of this label, we will say the text. So the text here is hello world. So the standard basic programmer application is hello world. And I'm going to save this in a variable. Next, what I do is I just say label.pack. So we said that there's something called geometry managers. So pack, grid, and place. And there are three types of geometry uh, managers. And they enable you to place your widgets in some type of organized way inside of your interface. Now, video number three is actually about geometry managers. So stay tuned for that one where I go into more depth. But for now, we're using pack simply to just place these things inside the interface. All right. So now that we've defined the label, we've packed the label. If I run this code, you can see that we have the label right here. So the label here, it's just text. It says, hello world. You can enlarge it or decrease it, and it looks the same. Now, there are other properties you can add to the label, but I'm going to get to those at a later stage in the video. But for now, this is how we're able to create this label. All right. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an entry. So I will create an entry using these two lines of code. Now, this is pretty similar to what we already did for the label. So I define an entry. So I use the tkinter.entry class and the parent here is window. So the class itself is tkinter.entry. So this is a class provided by the tkinter library or the tk library. I create an instance of this class, which is this object. So here you go. Text entry is an object and the variable is called text entry. Now I'm stressing on this because this is essentially related to Python object oriented principles. If you feel that you, you are lacking in some knowledge there that you don't really get what's going on, um, what are classes? What do we mean when we're instantiating a class or we're creating an instance of this class? Then I do suggest you just go back, you review some Python OOP. This could take like half a day with you maximum and then come back and learn tkinter because this will greatly help you um, as you learn. All right. So that was just a side note. Other than that, simply we just do the same thing. We define window as the parent here and then we will say uh, we will pack it. So the same thing that we did before. Now, if I run this code, we have an entry right here. So an entry is an input entry and I can type literally anything inside of it. And this is how I enter input to my application. So in the future, let's say, for example, you have a login and a sign in form. 
Um, so the user would have to enter their email, then they enter their password, and then they could maybe click some type of button and verify whether the email and password are correct or not. So this is just one example of how you can use input fields. I'm sure you've seen these all over the internet. I don't need to tell you what they are, but this is just how you do it with Tkinter. And finally, the third thing I'm going to create is a button. So you can see right here, I created the button. Again, I passed window as the parent for this widget. And finally, I just specify the text. So the text is sort of the label that's on top of the button that is that will show you what text will appear on the button. So if I run it, you can see that the button says hello world as well. Now, just not to confuse you between the two hello worlds, I'm just going to rename the button to be hello. Um, this way you won't get confused and why they both are called hello world. So it's not related that you can spy, specify any string here, um, but it's just for the sake of example. All right, so these are the absolute basics of creating these three types of widgets in Tkinter. Now, what can you do with them? Now, the first thing you can do is you can modify some properties related to their appearance. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's say the label, I can come here and I can say BG equals red and then FG equals blue. Now, just bear with me for a second. It's going to appear pretty ugly, I think, but here you go. So you can see now that the, with the label has a background of red and it has hello world um, with like the, fo the font is blue. So this is the foreground, this is FG and the background is BG. So this is how we're able to change the colors. Another thing you can change is the width of this label. Now the width does not necessarily depend on the text inside it. Now that the background is red, we can actually verify whether the width is actually larger. So if I specify a width of 50, and I run it again, you can see that the label just got much wider. Now, had I not had a background color, I wouldn't have been able to tell the difference. So if I remove the background color, and now I run it, you wouldn't tell the difference, but this is essentially what's going on. So we specify that the width is 50, and by 50 here, this means 50 characters. So if I type 50 characters, um, this will be right here. Okay. So this is some appearance changes for the label. Now, what can I do for the entry? Same thing, I can also go ahead and change the BG. So I can say BG equals to uh, green. And these are like super ugly colors here, but I'm just doing this for example again. So I can type stuff and you can barely see it. Um, so another thing you can do actually is you can change the FG as well and that would change the um, the foreground or the font uh, font color you can change the colors using hex codes so i can for example say uh i'm just going to try like some random hex number i have no idea what this like color is let me run it i think i'm getting an error okay i think i should have just put a hashtag here oh, okay so the color is that pink um so vs code is really nice there's one extension that you can give you the colors uh before you run it but yeah so i got the color pink if i type hi um i can see it maybe better now so yeah that's another thing you can do you can also uh, change the foreground like i mentioned here i can also change the width to be 50 so similar to what we did with the label before and this will change the width um, there are other things related to sizing. You can change padding. You can change things like that, but I'm not going to go into too much detail here. They're essentially related to appearances and styling. And I feel like that would deserve its own video and how to modernize and make our interfaces look nice and pretty. But yeah, that's like some idea of what you can do for the appearances. You can do the same thing for the button. So if you come back here, you can also say BG equals and then just do some random color again i have no idea what this color is let me add the hashtag and it's this apparently very ugly yellow so i'm going to run it and you can see we have the same yellow right here okay so we changed the background um, anything else we can do we can also change the active background as well as the active foreground so what is active background so active background let's say for example red this would change the color of the button when i hover over it so now if I hover over the button, uh, actually not hover, this is clicking. Uh, okay, so if you click over the button, you will see um, the red color. So, so sorry about that, my bad, but yeah, you can see a red color when you click. You can also change the active foreground. 
So active foreground and I want the foreground to become uh, white. So once I click, I want the text to be white. Now, if I run it and I click on the button, you will see the text becomes white as well as the background becomes red. So this is also something interesting. You see this a lot in modern apps that you, a button changes color when you hover over it or when you click on it. So this is also really interesting. So I think for appearances, that's really it. I'm not going to go into too much detail. Let's talk about other things. For example, let's talk about the state. So the state can be used with entry and button, and we can do something like this. So state equal disabled, and it's uh, capital disabled, okay? So sorry about all the text that you're seeing. So the state is now disabled. Now if I run it, what happens? I cannot type inside of this entry. It's grayed out. I can't type inside it. It's disabled. And this is really common in interfaces. So for example, let's say you need to insert certain information before you can proceed and fill out the rest of a form. So the rest of the form would be disabled until you have completed the start of the form. You press confirm, the website verifies your data, and then this part gets enabled. So this is also interesting for more interactive applications, and that is state um, disabled. You can do the same thing for the button. So I'm just going to paste this right here and run it. And you can see the button is also grayed out and you cannot do anything. So here the state is disabled as well. Another thing I want to show is, so for the entry, what you can do, let me just um, re-enable the entry so we can see it. I can say uh, show, not state, and I can pass this string, which is this kind of star character. And now if I run it, Okay, here we go. And now if I type here, you can see all my characters are hidden by the star. And this is super common for password inputs. So let's say you have a login form, the user has to also enter their password. This is super useful if you want to hide the password from the user. And this is really common in login forms. So this is another option you can use for the entry. And I'm just going to remove it since we don't need it anymore. And I'm going to also re-enable the button and remove the... Um, active colors. Okay, so the final thing I want to show you is related to the button actually, and that is the command property. So what is command? Now I did talk about it very briefly before, but the command essentially is something that will get executed on a button click event. So what is a button click event? An event in programming in general is whenever something occurs. So it's just like real life. So let's say you went shopping, uh, you went out, you went swimming. These are all events. These are things that happen. Uh, let's say an apple fell from a tree. This is an event. So here, an event in the context of programming is the user pressed on a button. And this is the event. It's a click event. So command will get executed when this click event is, well, when it occurs. So what does the command we want to execute? Let's just say we're going to call it uh, print, uh, print hello. Okay, so sorry for my typos. Now, obviously, we don't have such a function yet. So I'm just going to come here and define that function myself. And now I'm just going to give it um, some code. Let's just for now print hello world. So now let me run it and show you what's going on. So if I run it, you can see the button is disabled again. And now what happens is when I click on hello, now you can't see the console output, but now you can see hello world. So you can see it was able to print it. Now, if I press it again and again and again, you can see that each time it gets printed out as well. So what's happening here is when I cl click on the button, this event gets recorded. Now the command print hello will get executed. So it will go here inside this function and print out hello world. Now you can make this even cooler. So what can you also do? Rather than print out hello world, what you can do is the following. So you can print, rather than print out a custom type of text, and print text entry dot get. And let me actually move this function to be inside this part so that it can actually understand what text entry is. And I'll explain this in a moment, but let me run it now and show you. Stop run. Okay, so now I press on hello world. For now, nothing gets printed. Let me just type some stuff here and press on hello again. And you can see that the same stuff gets, sorry, the same stuff gets printed out 
in the console. So why did I move this here? Simply for the fact that we want to actually use this variable and this variable is defined within the context of our main method. So I need to actually refer to it from inside the main method. So that's just like simple Python stuff. But anyways, you get the point. What we're trying to do here is we are printing what we already have in the entry. And this dot get function is specific to the entry widget itself. So this entry class. So each entry class has this dot get function. So that's really it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was enough to sort of get you started with tkinter and get you started with these three very basic widgets. So the label, entry and button. Now in the future video, so in tomorrow's video, I will be going through geometry managers. So pack, grid and place, which are three different ways you can place these widgets on your screen. We're going to use the same three types of widgets we learned today. And what I'm going to do is simply organize them and place them in different methods on the screen. So without further, uh, further ado, that's really it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this series and yeah, leave any feedback in the comments. Thank you so much. Bye bye.